American media can be pretty insular, maintaining most of its attention on things happening here inside of our own borders. But even so, you probably know on some level that something is happening between Poland and Belarus. Some sort of situation involving migrants, a tense situation that seems to be getting worse. And so we decided we wanna bring on an expert to come on, tell us about what's going on, where this might go so that we can learn a little bit. And we're very lucky to be joined um, to that end, once again on the program by freelance journalist and investigator Natalia Antonova. Welcome to the Damage Report. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, always glad to get a chance to to, to speak with you. So, um, the situation there at the border, uh, basically, what, what's going on? Um, well, what we're seeing uh, is uh, the dictator of Belarus. I think we should not be calling him president at this point. The Belarusian dictator is essentially weaponizing migrants against um, against the EU. Um, he is allowing people to fly into the country, just to put it in very simple terms. And then those people uh, from various countries, uh, such as I believe uh, Iraq and Syria, they're being pushed towards the border with Poland, creating a crisis. Uh, of course, the weather is also getting colder in Europe, and this is contributing to the you know, the situation being not just uh, you know scary, but also plain barbaric at this point. Mm -hmm. at, at this point, I mean, there, there's a couple of thousand migrants, at least as of what I was reading. Perhaps the number has changed, and and there there have been reports of deaths due to the exposure, the sort of weather you're talking about, correct? Yes, yes, there's definitely reports. I believe one person was confirmed to have died yesterday of hypothermia, and I think, or maybe that was the day before yesterday. I believe another person drowned. Wow. Okay, and, and as you say, I mean, like, it, it's so disgusting because, of course, you have these people who are legitimately trying to get somewhere where they can be safe, where they can have a better life. They're fleeing countries that are dangerous. But as you say, they're effectively being turned into tools of foreign policy, and this isn't like this isn't the first step. Like there had been these back and forth political moves between Lukashenko and the EU and between Poland. Can you tell us a little bit about how we got to the position we're in right now? Um, so in order to understand how we actually got here, we have to look at history. Uh, Alexander Lukashenko is somebody who cultivates this adorable redneck uncle image, right? But in fact, he is uh, Europe's last dictator, basically, as people like to call him. He's a very cruel person with a history of violence toward any political opponents within Belarus. And he's been running Belarus with an iron fist uh, for decades now. I mean, there are People in Belarus who have seen nothing but his rule. He's been in power long that longer than Vladimir Putin, uh, his big cool friend, as I like to call him. And uh, you know, he has the tactics that he's using against the EU, the revenge and intimidation. Um, they are the tactics that he has kind of perfected by using them against his own people for quite some time. There have been mass protests against uh, Lukashenko in recent years because he blatantly stole the 2020 election. Um, we have all the evidence that it was complete and utter fraud, which is why I personally refuse to call him president of Belarus. And uh, because of that, he was sanctioned and he's really mad about the sanctions and he's lashing out. There are also unconfirmed but very persistent reports, intelligence reports that say that he has a health problem. His health is deteriorating. Uh, he may have long COVID, I've heard that repeated from many very, very good sources. And um, you know, he may just be trying to cement his rule to make sure that, you know, in a kind of Game of Thrones is twist, a twist, he wants to make sure that his youngest son, his favorite child, uh, gets to, you know, keep the throne of Belarus after uh, dear dad is gone. And he's going about this in this really barbaric way. And migrants are a hot button issue in the EU. So guess what? He's going to basically import migrants and then use these human beings as a battering ram against the EU. Do we um do we have any idea at this point? I, I know you know it, it's it's only been ongoing for a little bit. Do do we know what the likely fate of these migrants is going to be? I mean, they're obviously at risk if they stay out there on the border, especially as the weather is getting worse day by day. Do we think that at some point the EU is going to to finally let them in? Will Poland blink? How, how do you see this playing out? 
Um, I honestly have no idea because it's such a, a volatile situation and Lukashenko is such a volatile man at this point. Uh, this is not a failure of Belarusian policy. You know, if, if we were talking about policies on the ground where the Belarusian state was, was doing X and Y and this resulted in this catastrophe, it would be one thing. But no, this is somebody who is hell bent on, um, you know, just really, really just acting out in vengeance, lashing out at, at his perceived enemies. And of course, he has somebody very powerful in his corner. He is Vladimir Putin. And uh, Lukashenko is doing everything he can to kind of draw Putin into this conflict with the EU. And you see Russian um, nuclear capable bombers being deployed near Poland as the result of all of this activity because Polish troops are on the border with Belarus right now, and it's basically creating, uh, you know, this. It's, it's a snowball effect. The situation is getting more and more out of hand, and because you have the Kremlin, which again, Putin aging a bit miffed at the world, maybe not as much as Lukashenko, maybe a bit more reasonable, we can hope. But still, this is the kind of situation where I really hesitate to make any predictions because it could spiral out of control at any moment. Okay. Yeah, and um, can you tell us a little bit more about what Russia is doing to support uh, Lukashenko? Um, and and also, is has the U.S. taken any position whatsoever on this? Uh, well, you know, we're expressing grave concern. The United States is expressing grave concern. Uh, we are sending signals uh, to uh, Russia in particular that they can't just uh, let Lukashenko run wild. Russia, in the meantime, is basically all but you know is essentially according to some accounts, basically absorbing Belarus at this point. We know that Lukashenko has been meeting with Putin. We know that he brought his youngest son. We don't know what was said, but it looks like there is some kind of assurances that Lukashenko wants from Putin. And there's obviously assurances that Putin wants from Lukashenko. What we're seeing is, you know, this, it's it's basically just, it's a big test for, I think, for, for the Biden administration right now. Uh, it's obviously a huge test for the EU on how we deal with this, whether or not we defuse it, how we defuse it, how many more people are going to die while we're trying to defuse it. So uh, again, I really hesitate to say what will happen next, but I do think something needs to be done because Putin in particular needs very clear red lines. We've seen that in the past that yeah. he does. And right now there are no clear red lines and nobody knows what's going on. Yeah. Well, and as you point out, while we're waiting to find out, there's a cost that can be measured in lives potentially being lost in the next few days. So hopefully someone in this process, some leader will actually think about those people and not just the geopolitical implications of all this. Exactly, um, we can't count on Putin and Lukashenko to do it, they don't care. Exactly, exactly. Well, uh, Natalia, uh, as always, we uh, you appreciate you taking time out to help uh, explain a complex situation to us. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.